Let us pray. We give you all the glory. We give you all honor. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. Father, in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And our God, we want to thank you. We want to appreciate you for today. We give you all your all glory for your blessings and for your wonderful works in our lives and in our families and also as, we, as regards our works and businesses. We thank you for your blessings that we have received and that we are enjoying as individuals, as a church, and as a family. Lord, we pray that you have set up thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit this session to you that as we brainstorm, as we discuss on issues that will move us forward financially, may your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you take perfect control and you will use the vessel you have prepared to the glory of your name in the name of Jesus. In the end, Father, may your name be glorified. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, sir, for for that uh, for the for the opening prayer. Uh, we would now move on to uh, once again. We'd like to thank everybody for for your presence and for joining us in this very very uh, very uh, meeting edition of the young of the youth professional fellowship for professionals fellowship uh, event. We will now take the opening hymn, Put Thou Thy Trust in God, and permit me, I'm just going to share it on the screen so that we can all uh, sing from the comfort of our, of our living rooms. So, put, put thou thy trust in God, author Paul Geha. La 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 Walk in his strength and his and I walk the So years on years roll on his cover and challenge the clouds and darkness hide his path, the promise grace is sure live to his sovereign sway to choose and to command so shall the wandering on his way how wise, how strong his hands. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you all very much. Um, that's a very, very powerful hymn talking about us putting our hope and our trust in God. Um, we'll now go to the next item on the agenda, which is essentially opening remarks and introductions. 
Once again, we'd like to welcome everybody to this event. Uh, we have um, we have online, we have in our midst today our uh, Reverend, uh, our, our, our Archdeaconry of the um, All Souls Anglican Church. We recognize the presence of Venerable Forlorn Shaw Orelua Agbelusi, who has played who has played a very very uh, pivotal role in making this event uh, possible. We really thank you very much. We also recognize the presence of um, Reverend Olalua Akinshola. Thank you, sir, for the opening uh, prayer. And we we recognize the presence of uh, Deacon Innocent. Uh, we thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and we also thank every other person. I can see quite a number of people that I might not be able to, for sake of time, that I, I would not uh, permit me to just um, to just say all other protocols observed. Um, and without more to do, I'm going to introduce to us uh, the our guest speaker for today, in person of Mrs. Nimi Akinkuwe. I know that quite a number of us have uh, at one point or the other um, read about her, listened to her speak. She's a prolific uh, speaker. She's, um, she, she, has, um, she has in, in no small way, um, she's done a lot of good finance. She is a guru in the financing sector and we're very, very pleased to have her with us today. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, if you permit me, before she goes into uh, before she goes into today's um, today's uh, um, uh, topic, I'll just read a bit. I'll just read out a citation. Nimi Akinkube is the founder and chief executive officer of Best Man Games Limited, a leading African games company and the African distributor of customized Hasbro games, including the world, the world famous Monopoly board game. The City of Lagos edition of Monopoly, launched in December 2012, was the first African city edition of Monopoly, empowered um, a Monopoly. Best Man Games seeks to harness and the medium of gaming to engage, entertain, empower, and educate. Prior to this, Ms. Ni Ms. Nimi joined, enjoyed a successful banking careers spanning 23 years. First at Stambik IBTC PLC, where she rose to the position of general manager and head private banking and director Stambik IBTC Assets Management Limited. Subsequently, she joined Barclays Bank PLC as regional director of West Africa for three officers and four Nigerians. Achieving financial security ranks as a major source of concern for the Nigerian family, and Nimi seeks to harness financial literacy and inclusion as a tool for youth empowerment, entrepreneurship, and economic development through, through speaking engagements and seminars, television and radio, articles and leading publications, social media, the monopoly, the monopoly board game and her book, A to Z of, of Personal Finance. Nimi provides frank practical insights to create a greater awareness and understanding of personal finance and wealth management issues, encouraging them to save and invest for long-term financial security. In January, 2019, Bestman Games Initiative in collaboration with the Lagos State Ministry of Education embarked on a project to introduce financial literacy school clubs as an extra 60 school clubs have been set up thus far. Nimi holds a bachelor's degree from London School of Economics, LSE, and an MBA from Lagos Business School. She also formalized her interest in music by obtaining a piano teaching diploma ARCM from the Royal College of Music London. Nimi's directorship includes Standard Chartered Bank Nigeria Limited, House of Tara International, and the Playpen Child Development Center. She is a member of Artists Committee of the Musical Society of Nigeria, Muson, and the Institute of Directors, IOD. 
She's an, account, she's an assistant organist at our Savior's Church, TBS. She was recently appointed to the inaugural board of the Nigerian Stock Exchange Group, PLC. In her spare time, Nimi is a keen orchid gardener, loves boating, writing, traveling, and, and playing the piano. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please welcome with us to this uh, program, none other than Mrs. Uh, Akikube. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll just share the slides. Can you see the slides now? Can you see the slides? Yes, we can see this. We can see okay. the slide. Yeah. Just put it on the slide. Okay. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's such an such an honor to be here, and and I, I'm particularly thrilled to talk to a fairly young audience because when you learn to invest, save, and invest, and plan when you're quite young you have a much better chance to have a successful financial future, especially at a time like this. So well, there's so much to talk about. I'm just gonna rush through the slides because I think we'll have much more value from the Q&A that will come, come afterwards. But can you hear me clearly or do we need to adjust anything? We can hear you clearly. Can you hear me clearly, okay, fantastic. Yes, we can hear you clearly. All right, so I'll just, just start then. Slide show. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is going to sort of cover so many areas. There's so much to talk about from our health to friends, work, career, business, family, our finances, time, just the use of this time that we have. So let's start by talking about the realities, what we're facing now the coronavirus pandemic, but even before that, we already had a major crisis, being a, a, a country that has one major product, 90% of our income, our revenues as a country is from oil. So a drastic decline in the oil prices is catastrophic for us. Dwindling foreign reserves, stock market, people have lost so much in the market, the prices of the shares have fallen just being stuck at home for such a long time. So businesses are going through so much trauma because there's no demand for their products and services apart from the essential services. Of course, most businesses are having to look carefully. Many people would have got their March salary. You wonder how many will be able to pay the April salary in full. So their pay cuts looming. Many, many people, including some people on this call perhaps, will face a period of unemployment. And then of course, we've heard about some of the security challenges we're having all over, all over the country. That is why we're here, because financial planning, you know, in a crisis situation, crisis brings uncertainty. And it's so important that you manage that uncertainty and anxiety. You know, a lot of us, when you're, when you're scared, when you're nervous about your money, you can end up making very rash decisions based on panic. And that has very grave consequences. This is why financial planning is so, so important. Of course, you can't be in control of everything that happens to you. But if you are informed and if you plan ahead, then you can at least address those crises in a very manageable way. And the best part of crisis is that crisis always comes with opportunity, but it's opportunity for those that are prepared to seize the opportunity. Many people are going to miss this time, sadly, but every single crisis the world has had, we haven't had as many as big as this. You've had incredible success stories that came from such a crisis. For those that are seizing the opportunities, have a plan, stay focused, don't listen to all the noise that's all around us, all the fake news. They stay focused, they had a plan, the plan isn't working, they start to adjust that plan and move on and seize the opportunities. The opportunities are incredible, okay? 
Now, um, in business and in our lives, we're very comfortable in our comfort zones. I'm someone that is so comfortable in my comfort zone. I just know where I'm comfortable. I don't want to step out. I just want to be in that zone. The truth of the matter is that if you don't take some risk and seize opportunities and step out of, the, of your comfort zone to seize those opportunities and chase your dream, you're just gonna be there. Because life, you have to lead that life of your dreams. We all have to try and find a way of stepping out of that comfort zone. I'm loving this time of stillness because this is the time you have to reflect, to be in prayer, to be thinking and considering what is going on. I, I, I don't know about many of you out there, but I thought that we were completely out of control. The whole world was out of control. So it's almost like there's a reset button. We are all going to have to stop. We've been forced to stop. But what are you doing with this time? Are you just waiting for us to be let out or are you reflecting? Are you prayerfully considering what you're supposed to be doing? Are you considering your purpose? Are you considering your goals? All the plans you had. Some of the plans you had last year for 2020 are completely gone. This is a time to rethink of what you need to be doing. In spite of all the, all the negatives, Nigeria is still the largest economy in Africa. It will grow after all we've gone through. We will get back on track and things will get better. You have found now, look at us on this call. A month ago, I never thought of a webinar. I've never, I'd never been on a webinar. In March, I had never been on a webinar in my life. I'd been a, a guest, but I had never been a speaker. This has changed everything. Everybody, every one of us has got to embrace technology. So you're, you're young, you're all under 50, but you better tell your parents in their 60s and 70s they had better embrace technology. Otherwise, they're going to be obsolete, extinct. Everybody has got to embrace technology. So when I was first invited to do a webinar in, in March, I declined. I was just, I just didn't know how, what am I going to say? I didn't know what to do. My daughter said to me, I will, you'll become a dinosaur, she said to me. So I had to quickly go online and learn about webinars and technology and how my team can continue working online. Now we've got a fantastic remote working thing in place. So we're working nine to five every day, like we're working. Okay, so we have a youthful, energetic entrepreneurial populace. We have a huge market of 200 million people. It's unbelievable what we actually have. 200 million people, which means that even if nobody else wants our products, there's enough of us to buy our products and services among ourselves. So we must never forget that. The negativity can make you just be in despair and you just wonder what's gonna happen. This is the truth. We're phenomenal, energetic, the most, some of the most gifted doctors all over the world are Nigerian. The best pilots, some of the best business people. So we've just got to refocus and remember the blessings that we have as a nation. Let's not focus on the negative. We'll get over this virus. So the importance of financial planning establishes your goals and priorities. It empowers you to be able to be in control of your financial life, your business life, makes it possible for you to take care of your dependents, your loved ones. And most of all, it helps you cope with the type of shock and uncertainty that we're facing right now. And it ensures long-term financial stability and peace of mind. So you may not have had a financial plan before now, so you're in dire straits. Start that plan from now. So even if you missed the boat and things are really dire, we'll talk about that. But the thing is, don't make this mistake next time. There will be another crisis. So don't make this mistake next time. Don't be caught napping the next time. Look at the financial planning life cycle. The growth is exactly where the demographic on this call is. Look at 20s, 30s, 40s. By your 50s, you can see the curve of income tapering away. Unless you had been investing in your 20s, 30s, and 40s, how do you hope to finance the period of your 60s, 70s, and 80s? 
unless you had been buying property, stocks, you had business interests, you've been investing in yourself, what's going to happen? You're probably going to have 30 years of life after retirement, God willing. So if you have not invested in that time now, it's going to be very difficult. This is the time to acquire those assets, the time to invest in yourself, the time to invest in your business, in your career. This is that time now. The great thing, I hope there are a lot of 20-year-olds on this call, are there? A lot of 20-year-olds? People in their 20s? Do we have uh, quite... I would, want to believe so. That's no, great. No, believe so, yeah. If, if you're in your 20s, this is fantastic. I wish I had this sort of um, seminar in my 20s. Time is precious, it's, but it's limited. But you know what? I, I don't know. I have never had so much time in my entire life as I have now. It's incredible. I don't know what we were doing with all that time, jumping around, going to events, not you know, ridiculous. So this time is the time to review everything. Don't waste this time because soon we're all going to be out there again. And even when we get out there, don't ever go back to where you were before. I really feel this, is a, this was a time to stop, be still and start again. So don't, don't go back to how you were before. There's, there was so much wrong with it. There was so much waste. So it's a fantastic opportunity to re-energize, to rejuvenate, to restart, okay? It's time to establish a firm foundation of your financial future for the young people. And you know, in your youth, you can afford to take some risk. You have many years. One of the most um, fundamental ingredients of successful investing is time. So people in their 60s now are going to be so worried the stock market has fallen, their property values have fallen. But imagine if you're in your youth, you can afford to take some risk, you can do interesting things without worrying as much. So personal finance in your 20s, maybe you're living at home, relatively few responsibilities, you're focusing on career growth, choice of spouse, you have a gift of time. Time is irreplaceable. Just a word for some, some, some of the 20 year olds may be very, very fortunate. They're living with parents. You don't have to spend much of your own money. You have a job. Be very, very careful. Be mindful of the disadvantage of privilege. Privilege comes with disadvantage because sometimes you think it's all great. Everything is free of charge. You're being indulged by your parents. You're living at home. You're not paying any bills. There's a fantastic book called Choking on the Silver Spoon for the parents in their 40s, 50s. Try and get hold of that book. I've forgotten the author, I'm sorry. Choking on the Silver Spoon. So sometimes parents, as they're building wealth, I'll talk more about spoiling children later, but if you're in this situation, be careful because your parents may end up, you know, shortchanging your ambition. It's very, very real. Over my almost 30 years of experience in wealth management, I've seen this happen many times where wealthy people end up not having children that become wealthy because they've been shortchanged by the overindulgence and privilege. So if you're one of those people living in your parents' home and everything is free and you have, they bought you everything, be very careful to ensure that you do focus on your own goals and not on your parents' goals. In your 30s, you're starting, you've got a good job, you're raising a young family, your career, business growth, probably if you've got married, childcare, education come into the piece, home ownership, insurance, estate planning, if you've got children, you've got to start thinking of these things. In your 40s, you know, your 40s, for most people, their 40s tend to be their prime earning years for a lot of people in their late 40s but expenses are rising almost as fast as income. They've got a huge mortgage, critical phase for long-term success. This phase is so important for you to get things in order for the rest of your life. What you save and invest in your 40s has huge implications on the quality of life that you'll be able to experience in your retirement years. In your 50s, you may be at the peak of your career, 
about to switch maybe into entrepreneurship. I was 50 when I left a major banking career and decided to go into entrepreneurship. It's a very daring thing to do, but you've got to decide by your 50s what you're going to do. Because by 60, if it's a corporate situation, they're going to tell you to retire. What are you going to do if, God willing, you live for 30 more years? What are you going to do for 30 more years? You're not going to retire at 60. Who's re who retires at 60? Our president is 75. The presidential candidates in, in America are in their 70s. And then most people just can't afford to retire at 60. So you've got to have a plan. What are you going to do? You may still have very expensive children, desire for change. Maybe you just don't want to work in a corporate setting anymore. But you've become, especially if you're in a corporate person in your, in your 50s, it, the golden handcuffs are very, very powerful. You know, if you're in a top banker, you're getting a fantastic house, cars, you're getting free trips, business class. Be very careful because it's that it's a false sense of security. And if you don't make sure you are building things for yourself, when you leave that type of job, it can be devastating. Okay. It might be very difficult to maintain your standard of living. So in your 40s and the corporate world, start planning for life after that great institution that you work for. Then you have to think about caring for aging parents especially if your parents didn't plan for their own retirement, that can be a very significant cost. And then another major, major cost, children's weddings. You need to set money aside for children's weddings, the way you set aside for their ed education. Now with coronavirus, I'm hoping that we will change that whole, we were excessive. So maybe we will all now know that you can actually Maybe we'll have Zoom, Zoom weddings, I don't know. <laughs> Where there, are, there are Zoom birthday parties already, but I don't know about Zoom, Zoom wedding. But really, we have, to, we have to cut things back. It is too much. People are going bankrupt over family funerals and family weddings. It's just not, not what we're supposed to be doing with our money. Okay, now I'm gonna quickly run through 10 areas that you need to think about for your financial plan. Now, don't try and do all of them. If you, if you take away from this seminar just three and try to implement those this year, it will make a huge difference. So don't try and look, but there, there are 10 here and you need to make sure you're, you're thinking about these. But some of them, would, some of you will be further ahead and some maybe you haven't thought of others and so on. The first one is to set smart goals. I mean, I'm hoping we all have goals. Some people tend to just drift through life without a solid plan. Where are where, you know? You need to know where you are. Where do you want to be? How will you get there? If you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. So you need goals. You need short-term, medium, and long-term goals. What What are your goals for the rest of this year? Maybe you plan to go back to school this year. Maybe you're trying to finish paying for your home this year. You, need your, you, you must finish paying for your, your mortgage. Maybe you want to leave your job and, and set up a business. You have to have a plan and know what it is. Maybe the situation that we're in now has changed your goals and that's okay. Your goals have got to be smart. If your goals are no longer realistic, forget it. Figure out what is realistic. There's no point chasing a goal that you had in December, 2020. We had a retreat in my company in December. We had the most incredible plans and they were coming on track in January, even February, fantastic. In March, unbelievable. Suddenly all the plans dashed. So we had a retreat last week, Friday, and we found, we, okay, we've shelved those plans, move on. And we found some new fantastic plans, but we've, you've got to sit down with your team sit down with your family and think about what is going to happen. Things have changed. The worst thing you can do is to just cross your arms and wait for the end of coronavirus. You can't do that. You can't do that. We don't know, even when they let, when, when they let us out, you're still going to be scared of going out because the virus is still there. Even America and so on, people are say, they're letting them out, but they've got strict protocols which are going to affect everything. Your staff can't keep coming to the office. If you own a restaurant, 
no one is coming. So you've, you've got every single business, every one of us has got to think, how do you survive? Life has changed for the foreseeable future. Who knows when we'll have a, have a, vi a vaccine? And who knows, even if we have a vaccine for Corona COVID-19, if some other virus won't come, of course we stay on our knees and we pray like mad and we hope for the best, but you've got to have a plan. You've got to have a plan. How much money do you have? What are you worth? What are you worth? Do you know what you're worth? The stock, val stock values have fallen Property values may have fallen. Some are some fantastic opportunities for stocks, for property. But you need to know what you're worth. What does your portfolio look like? Do you have any stocks? Do you have mutual funds? Do you have property? What do you have? Do you know? When last did you check? Can you use this time of the lockdown to check what you actually have? And what do you owe? Do you have a mortgage you're trying to pay for? Do you have a car loan? What other bills do you have? Do you have other debt, debt you've borrowed from friends and family? You need to know. When you take your liabilities from your assets, you have your net worth. You need to know what your net worth is. And ideally, your net worth should be rising every year. If it doesn't, fine. It just means that you need to go back and see where you can cut back. Another good way to measure where you are is your personal income statement. How much is coming in and where, where is it coming from? Do you have any property, rent? Do you have dividends? And where's your money going? Expenses. Take your, in, your, your expenses from your income to find out how much you have left, if there's anything. It may even be negative. But the thing is that you, you do need to, to know what you have. Then budgeting. It's, it's such a timeless old tool. It really, really matters now. We all have to cut back because we don't know for how long this uncertainty in our personal and our business lives will be for. So, so you just have to cut back. The best way to cut back is to find out exactly, track your income and expenses. Where's your money going? Where does all this money go to? A budget will help you to prioritize between your wants and your needs. It helps to check your spending habits. It helps you to identify where you're wasting money. I mean, I was talking to a friend of mine a few days ago, my DSTV um, bouquet. I only watch three or four channels, but I have, I think I must have 50 or something. I've, I, don't even, I don't even watch them. So what am I doing with a book, the highest bouquet? So she just told me that I can cut my spending in half and I'll have the same channels I look, I use. I don't, I don't use all the super sport and this and that and the other. So that, that's one way. And then your, your telephone. Sometimes we don't even know that there are some incredible packages with, I don't know, eight gig and 10 gig, I don't know. But you, you've just had this plan on your phone for the last five years and you've never bothered to change it. Meanwhile, you could be paying half what you're paying now. And then you have Wi-Fi on your iPad, in your house, on your phone. Do you need all that? Of course not. Because sometimes you have, you have Wi-Fi, you just use one of your devices as, as a hotspot. So you've got to really think of all the different ways of saving. It's so critical that you save some money and cut back on your expenses. So try and do that during the month of May. Track your expenses for the whole month of May. When I say track your expenses, I mean write every single thing down, everything. Of course, this is an unusual time, but you know, try and think of where your money is going and see where the excesses are. Another, some other budgeting tips. You know, you've, you, we're, we're dutiful, your tithes, your offerings. Can you, apart from that, pay yourself first? What I mean by that is before you start spending your income, set some money aside every month, every month, minimum 10%. But for people in their 20s, if you don't have any dependents, you can afford to do more than that. I find the best way to do that is to automate it. Because, you know, if money comes into your account for your salary, if you're fortunate enough to have a salary, if it's automated, as soon as it hits your account, let it go out. Because if you wait till the end of the month, 
you all know there's nothing left there's nothing left so it's best to automate it so that as the same day if you if you're lucky enough and maybe 28th of the month every single month you know the money is coming in then you can say 29th x amount goes out pick an amount that you can afford to take out otherwise you're going to dip into those savings so pick an amount so it, maybe for you it's 10000 or 50000 100000 whatever it is an amount that you can commit to automatically every single month it is incredible what happens when you do that so in my case the amount that i take out every month goes into the stock market so i've decided that's what i want that's where i want to where i want to save that monthly amount you might decide it's going into savings just to saving save save towards saving for a particular purpose so if you invest like that on a regular basis you'll be amazed how it can grow but it's about discipline consistency and commitment okay we'll talk about your emergency fund this is i've been preaching about emergency funds forever this is the time we all wish we had one now an emergency fund in other countries they say save maybe 3 to 6 months of your expenses just in case something happens you lose your job or you have a pay cut or something happens and you can't work so you have a bit of money that just tides you over in nigeria i tell people 6 to 12 months because we tend to have more emergencies than in other in other places you tend to find so i say you should have savings of at least 6 to 12 months of your expenses set aside so that at times like this you have something to fall back on not just for your personal finances for your business as well your business should also have 6 months of a reserve so you can continue to operate some people are completely broken now they have nothing nothing at all some businesses have had to close shop they don't have money to even pay the next next month of of salaries so your emergency fund is critical it helps you to meet it gives you peace of mind as well apart from the emergency fund you need some short term savings we all know about our savings interest bearing current accounts now it does not pay decent interest interest rates have crashed but you still need savings you don't want a situation where you have an emergency and you have to sell shares at a loss or borrow from somebody you want some savings to tide you over now look at the incredible thing about savings this 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 chart is amazing it talks about somebody in their in their 20s so saving 500000 a year okay until they're 50 now just look at this 500000 a year every single year that's like 50000 a month or something this is just an illustration. Now, I'm not taking into account devaluation, inflation, all those things. It's just a very basic compounding illustration. That person investing at 25, by the age of 65 or 50, would have come to about 150 million. I mean, it's incredible, but that's that is that is the power of compound interest. The same a person doing the same amount at 35, just 10 years older. It's 54 million. A person starting at 50. Look at look at that. So so it it just shows you that imagine if these people were doing that not just in savings but that 50,000 was going towards property or stocks or into a business how much more it would be. This is just saving at 10%. So imagine if it was a more lucrative investment what could have happened if if you were investing in your 20s and your 30s what could what you could get it's just it just shows you the power of compound interest I talked about automating your automating your finances so I urge you all next week as soon as the banks can help you put a direct debit in place just get started from May start with a tiny amount don't don't even if you don't have much now just start with something just force yourself to start with something Next thing is about debt. Most people will be in debt at some point in their lives and debt is not a bad thing. The thing is debt can be the biggest trap in your financial security if you abuse it. The more you owe, the more vulnerable you tend to be. So don't let debt ever ever be a way of life, a never-ending cycle of life. You need you need to use debt for things that will grow, okay? Now 
there's good debt and there's bad debt. Of course, it pays well to borrow to buy a home, but even if you're borrowing at, at our interest rates, it doesn't make sense to borrow for the life of the loan, no. But you might need to borrow for the short term to take advantage of a particular property you want to buy right now. But you don't want to be paying 20 something percent or eight. No, the rates are down now, 18%, 15% for a, for a mortgage and so on. You might invest, borrow to invest in your business. You might borrow to invest in a career skills or education. Don't borrow to invest on in a lavish holiday. Anyway, nobody even wants to, nobody wants to go on holiday right now anyway. So we won't borrow for that. Don't borrow to buy clothes. Don't borrow to buy jewelry. Don't try and borrow for things that will appreciate in value and, and you know, boost your financial, financial success. Now dealing with your debt, you, you need to pay, try to work on, if you're in debt right now, and a lot of people are, you need to focus on the most expensive debt or the debt that is causing you the most trauma. That means the lender is after your neck and it's just a nightmare. Those are the ones you need to deal with first. But the thing is that hiding away or not, not taking their phone calls or it is a disaster. If you're owing somebody money, stop hiding away pick up the phone and call the person. Acknowledge that you are in debt. You'll be amazed what that does. The worst thing is when you pretend and you start dodging and you know the person knows that you're trying to dodge and you say, oh, I lost your number. You know how people do, I lost your number. Oh, I, I lost my phone and I changed all my numbers. I couldn't reach you and all that nonsense. It's, it's very damaging because you will need to borrow again. And if you borrow in good faith and you tell the person I'm owing you, I don't have it now. As soon as we get back to business, I'll try to get my act together and I'll try and pay. Or if you have a bit to pay, pay a bit now if you can. And then you'll be amazed. People have a good heart. They will actually, may actually say to you, it's okay, let's have a payment plan, don't worry. It's, we'll spread it out. Some people, family and friends may even write off part of it. For the banks, don't ignore our letters. Don't ignore those letters. They'll come after your house or come after your car, come after you know, your assets. So you need to contact urgently tomorrow morning, your lenders, especially the banks, and just find a way to renegotiate the terms so you can come to a more palatable um, negotiation that will help you to pay off your loan. Fortunately, some banks are already saying that there's a moratorium on some on rent on, on um, business loans for small businesses for maybe three months. In other countries, even landlords are being told to not bother their tenants for say three months. I don't think that's happened here yet, but if you're, or has it, I don't know. <laughs> but if you're owing your landlord, quickly call your landlord. You don't want the first day when we go back, they throw your things out. Just ask for more time, okay? Don't abuse debt. You need to be able to borrow and your credit, your credibility is important. We have credit rating companies now. So if you have a bad rating, all the banks are members, which means if I, if you want to live in, you want to be my tenant before you're my tenant, I will go to the rating agency and check if you're owing anybody. And if you're owing somebody, I will not let you into my house. Or if, if I want to hire somebody and I check and they're in debt, I'll feel a bit comfortable if, I, if they're not looking after their, their borrowing um, life. So take your debt seriously. Now let's talk about investing. We'll talk, investing is so many different things. Investing in yourself, investing in your talent, investing in relationships, your career, your business, and of course, investing your money. The greatest investment of all is in yourself. You are your greatest asset. Before you think about stocks and property and all that, please remember you are your greatest asset. You need to invest in yourself. Never stop learning, never stop learning. Whether you're 20, 50 or 70, never stop learning. What is your purpose? Who are you? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Do you need to have a rethink during this period? By learning, make a conscious effort to learn and understand something new every day. I mean, I found out I got so busy, I was not reading enough. When last did you read a good book? Are you reading now? Have you picked up a book? What are you reading every single day? 
add value to yourself because you're only as good as the investment um, you, you put in yourself. The company that you keep, particularly for the people in their 20s and 30s, there's this saying that always makes me nervous. You're the average of the five people you spend the most time, in, time with. It is so true. You've got to be you've got to be deliberate and intentional about the people that you hang out with. Because regular exposure to people that are accomplished and successful and ambitious rubs off on you. If there's a saying that if nine all, all nine of your friends are broke, you are the 10th to be broke. Okay? So spend time with people that motivate and encourage you. Now, as a Christian, if, if you have people that are very, you know, just people, there's some people that call you and they drain you and they're, you're just, you just don't want to be around them. I know as Christians, we've got to try and help and so on, but limit the time you spend with such people. That's the truth. You need to pray for them, but you need to limit your exposure to people that weigh you down. If you can get counseling for them, send them to the counseling department. But you, at this time, especially, we need to be with people that motivate, build and nurture relationships that can build you, build you up. Are you proactive about networking? This is still about investing in yourself. How am I doing for time? Am I still okay? Uh, yes, we're still okay, yes. Okay, we're still, great. We're still okay. Having a few minutes. Okay, I'll rush, I'll rush a bit. I, keep, I always get the time. Um, networking, you know, we're locked away in the house, but because of technology, which is fantastic, you have an opportunity to still reach out to your network. I have a list of people on my desk, positive influences in my life that I am calling people every single day at this time. You know, we got so busy that we were, so, we were only WhatsApping or texting. You never pick up the phone to call people. This is that time to call people, check on them. How are they doing? How's their family? Your business contacts, your personal contacts, your fellowship groups, call people, build those relationships now. Now, I think God has given every single one of us a unique gift, a marketable skill, a talent. You're, it's your, you're, you're a steward to that ta talent. Have you identified your talent? Have you recognized it? Are you nurturing it? Are you utilizing it? Or have you buried it? It is, it is such a disaster when you have a talent and you bury it. You don't use it. So what is that phenomenal thing about you that everyone talks about? Is it technology? Are you artistic? Are you musical? Are you entrepreneurial? Can you cook? Can you sew? Can you organize? What can you do? Because I really believe, especially at a time like this, where people face unemployment, you know, if you faithfully use your gift from God, it opens up unimaginable doors for success. So you need to find what those things are. And this is a good time. Because sometimes you've had these hobbies that you were just nurturing in the background, you didn't really bother about them. This is the time to figure it out and maybe you need to put a bit of money behind that and this could be a side business to help you earn during this time. So it can really help you achieve your full potential. I can't stress this enough. And then please do the same for your children. Identify that talent in your children. Children display those talents from the age of three years old, three, four years old. You'll see your child is going to something there they're talking a lot, they're confident, they're acting, they can dance, they can write, they can, they tell stories, whatever it is. Give some focus to that, to that thing. Then of course your health. You know, there are so many people that have expended their health to gain wealth, only to come back and spend all their money to regain their health. It is disastrous. Don't lose your health. We all have an individual responsibility right now. We know it all. Wash your hands. Keep social distance. Practice self-isolation. Call the hotlines if you have to. I'm sure everybody on this call now knows somebody who caught the coronavirus. Three weeks ago, we didn't know anybody. Now, suddenly, we all know people. It's scary. So the choices that we make 
regarding our bodies have a significant impact on our future health. So prioritize your health, medical checkups, eating the right things, exercising, committing to a healthy, nutritious diet. It's just so important. And then investing for the future. We need to understand how you view risk because all investments have some risk, but some have a higher degree of risk than others. Stocks have a very high degree of risk, but then the potential return over the long term is still one of the best investments. So it's very sad that some people are just sitting there, they will never invest in stocks because they lost money a few years ago. Meanwhile, some of the fantastic stocks are, are selling at rock bottom prices now. So people lose opportunities. Risk can be managed. Avoiding risk altogether means that your return will never be great. So you can spread your risk and you can reduce your risk. Before you invest at all, you have got to seek professional advice because you can lose money. It is so easy to be taken by some of these scams, especially at times like this when people are desperate. If interest rates are 5% and somebody says they're gonna give you 20%, then you have to run, run, a, run away. Because if something sounds too good to be true, it usually is too good to be true. Don't get scammed now because out of desperation, if you've lost your job or you're, you've got a pay cut and you've got bills and someone gives you this deal, new deal in town, don't please be careful. Look at your situation and determine how much risk you can afford to take. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Diversification is the best way to spread your risk. So if all your money is in cash right now in Naira, that is a huge risk because if the Naira loses value, you've lost so much. But if you had some cash in Naira, in foreign exchange in a domiciliary account, if you had some stocks, if you had some bonds, you have some money in a business, you, you have to diversify your portfolios that you don't have all eggs in one basket. We all love Nigeria. We, we can't even go anywhere. We can't even go to Canada, if, even, if, even if we want to go. We're all here but you can still diversify out of a single currency, even when you're here, by having some foreign currency investments. For the young people, African art, Nigerian art is, a, is becoming a wonderful investment class. So I urge you to start to buy art, buy what you love, start attending art exhibitions. They do retain value over the long term, and, and it's a beautiful thing to have in your house as well. So apart from the regular investment classes, start looking at art as an alternative investment class. There's some phenomenal artists and the whole world is focusing on African art now and we're right here. So we have an opportunity to look at some of the new, don't, you don't need to go for, the, for the, the most famous artists, you can't afford those, but there are young artists coming up doing beautiful work. It's time to start looking at picking up some of those fantastic pieces. Now, mutual funds are one of the best investments, I think, for people who are just starting out and in investing. Most of the time, you don't really know which stocks to pick. But mutual funds are professionally managed. You have professionals picking the stocks, looking at the markets every single day of the week and determining what choice picks to put in your portfolio. So it's diversified. And there are different types of funds. Now, what happens is that they'll look at your own risk profile. Before you invest, somebody, your, your professional advisor has to look at your own situation. If you don't have any savings at all, no emergency fund, then you cannot, have, you cannot even think of investing in stocks because you can lose all your money. So they will look at your, your own situation and determine the type of investment for you. Mutual funds, there are money market funds, there are stock funds, there are foreign exchange funds, there are bond funds, there are ET, um, real estate trusts where you invest in property but in a fund. So look at all the various aspects of, in, of investing and start, but you must start. The great thing about mutual funds is they start from as low as 5,000 Naira. So when I was talking about automating your investments, my automatic investment goes into, into a stock mutual fund. So every single month I'm investing in stocks without thinking about it, it's automated, okay? Another interesting way of investing is through an investment club. 
Many years ago, my sister and a couple of friends and I had an, were in an investment club. That's four friends coming together to invest together because neither of, none of us had enough money to invest a large sum. But we, we put money together to be able to invest in a property. So let's say you all, each of you has, has only, has a million Naira and there's a property for 5 million. You can't afford it yourself, but you come together to, to buy it. You know, money spoils friendship. So it had to come with a legal agreement, all the terms properly spelt out. Fantastic, after a few years, we sold the property for much, much more than we bought it for. That's a great way to think about investing. If you have a few friends of like minds that can come together and start thinking of things to do together. So we had a kitty where every month we each put a certain amount into the, into the fund whilst we were looking for opportunities to invest in. So investment clubs are, are a great way of investing. I've talked about the stock market, no guaranteed return, higher risk. You may have to sell at a loss. You have to think long-term. It's, it's one of the best investments because it, you can get dividends, capital gain. Of course, the market has lost staggering value. But in, in a, a month ago, some of the companies paid excellent dividends. So you're still getting the dividends. It's a, a wonderful way of earning, earning money. Please don't panic sell if you don't have to. If you sell now, you're, concrete, you're, you're crystallizing your loss. So just try to avoid not selling unless you absolutely can't avoid, avoid it now and you have no other funds that you can fall back on. Stock market requires a long-term perspective. For me, when I invest in the stock market, I'm looking at beyond five years. I'm not, I'm, it's not funds that I'm looking at for the next five years. So that even if it falls, I won't have to, to panic. Property, great investment. And there are some amazing opportunities in the market right now, but they are only for those that are prepared. Unfortunately, opportunity favors the prepared. So it's only those that have the liquidity who have got some money now that can take advantage of the property investments right now. Location is key. Please, I know that a lot of people go and build a mansion in their village. It's fine if you've already got property that is earning you important income. But if you have no property, then you put all your life savings in a village property just to show off to all the villagers once a year at Christmas. It doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't make any sense. So please try to invest first in property that can help with your children's education, rental income for your retirement and so on before you do the, the show off investments, okay? Now let's talk about family. We're under a lot of pressure to have these huge weddings, bigger than the royal wedding. We have them in Lagos. It's not about the wedding. It's about the marriage. So for the young people on this call, please, I'm so worried. I'm sure the church is aware. We're seeing just a staggering number of breakups. This was not what used to happen. It's because where people are just not well aligned, they're not, their values aren't aligned, they're, they're, they haven't thought it through. There's just the societal pressure, especially for the young ladies. There's under, huge pressure to be married. So people are just marrying the first person that asks. The implications of the right choice and the implications of the wrong choice, you know, it is almost impossible to achieve your full potential with the wrong spouse. So it is better to delay marriage than to marry the wrong person. It is one of the most, apart from choosing to give your life, the biggest I think the biggest choice in your life ever is the choice of your spouse. So don't, don't blow that choice. Who pays for what? Will you both work? Who earns more? Will both of you leave full-time careers and go into entrepreneurship? Or will one of you maybe delay your dream and while the other one is on more, more steady ground just to manage the family finances? Who owns what? Where are the title documents? Are you hiding money away that your spouse doesn't know about? Money secrets break up families. Who's your next of kin? When I was a banker, it was quite interesting. About 80% of the men who opened accounts said brother for next of kin. 
brother, what about your wife and the mother of your children and your children? These are things that you've got to think about. Will you have joint accounts, separate accounts, or a combination? Most couples prefer to have a joint account for joint finances and then separate accounts to do, you know, with, for their own expenses. The money conversation should start before the wedding. Now, I'm not saying on the first date you ask how much is in the bank account. No, no, don't do that. But, you know, you need to talk about money before you get married. because It's such a fundamental issue. It is one of the leading causes of divorce and separation in marriages, money. So talk about those things. You need to know if your spouse has any debt before you get married. So you can both work on these things together. People's lifestyle, you can tell a lot about somebody just by watching their money personality. When it comes to your children, it's important that they begin to learn and respect money from now. They should be doing chores, they should be working, they should be holiday jobs, internships, all those things matter from quite, quite early on. And start saving from your, for your children from the time they are born. Mutual funds are a great way to set money aside for your kids. From the time they're born, set up a mutual fund account. They can't own the account themselves, but you can hold it in trust for them. So if godparents, grandparents want to give them a gift, a mutual fund is a fantastic gift. So on your children's birthdays, of course, you're going to buy toys and books and so on. But if you can also give a financial gift, that'll be fantastic. You'll be amazed what that does in the future when you can give them that saving, that investment that you did for them when they're, when they're mature. The danger of overindulging children is that it, it curtails their ambition. It makes it almost impossible for them to be independent. So you've got to be to guard against that because otherwise you'll find yourself in your 80s, 90s with dependent adults. So you've got to ensure that you make it possible for them to learn how to work hard and how to earn, earn a living. What do you owe your children? You owe your children the best education that you can afford. Now, the best, the most expensive education is not necessarily the best one for your child. So we have a lot of pressure now with some particular fancy schools that parents are feeling pressure that their child must go to a particular type of school. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. Don't go bankrupt over your children's education. The greatest part of your children's education is not even in school, it's at home. It's the values that you instill, their Christian faith. Those are the things that are timeless. The extra activities, you can add them on through church, through your, your social club and so on. But don't go and break your bank, break your back over school fees. Find a school that you can afford. You owe yourself a comfortable, secure existence, a comfortable, secure retirement. Don't become dependent on your children. There are many products, there are insurance companies now that you can plan from the time your child is born, you can start putting money aside towards the education in 10, 15 years. It's so fantastic because it makes you not have to just bring out a huge chunk every term. So parents are almost traumatized every term. Now this lockdown has opened a whole new vista of opportunity because now we're all online. So children are suddenly being educated online, which is a phenomenal prospect. It should also mean that education costs may, may come down, but you would you still have to pay something significant, but look at all these, explore all these opportunities. But education is one of the biggest expenses any parent will have. Don't let your insurance lapse now. I hope all of you have um, comprehensive, not third party on your car. <laughs> you need to have comprehensive insurance because the truth is if anything happens to your assets, you know, you, it's hard to replace them. It's hard to replace most cars now. If something happens to your house and you, you haven't even insured your house or your office, your assets, but most importantly, your health. If you got sick now or your children or your spouse got sick, are you gonna to have to pay cash for these expensive bills or do you have an insurance policy in place? Please, if you don't have insurance, that should be the call you make tomorrow morning.
to ensure your assets, your health, your life. Now, the life insurance policies that the Nigerian insurance companies have, have an unemployment benefit. So if you lose your job, they'll pay you the salary for a few months. Many people don't know that we have these products here. We have some fantastic um, products, even for school fees. If you lost your job or you became unwell, you could, it isn't all about, life insurance isn't all about dying. It has, it's an, there are investment products that take care of insurance, education, and situations like that. Retirement, many of you might seem, think you're too young to think about retirement, not so. You should start saving for retirement from the first day you start work. It's estimated that we're gonna spend a third of our lives in retirement. How will you afford it? Where will the money come from? It should come from interest income, dividends, rental income, business interests. If you have started to turn your hobbies and talents into a business, you might get some, some income from that. You might have to delay your retirement, full part-time work. This is what Warren Buffett, who is one of the greatest ever investors says, if you don't find a way to make money whilst you are asleep, you will work until you die. That means there are many people locked in their houses now. Sometimes they've lost their jobs or they've lost their salaries, but they check on their phone and there's an alert, a dividend just came in or rental income just came in. That's what we're talking about, passive income. Income that you have invested, you, you planned for it, you worked hard initially and invested, and now it is reaping the benefits. So you're earning that income even if you are asleep. That's where we all need to be. And then before we finish, we must talk about philanthropy. The COVID-19 virus has made us all realize that we are so interlinked. My behavior affects you and your behavior affects me. We have also all realized that there are many, many more people than we could ever have imagined that if they don't earn today, they don't eat tomorrow. So if you hadn't, this is a time that, you know, no matter how bad things are for you, there's always somebody much worse off than you. We all have to be in this effort. So every single one of us, we've got to give. You may not have the money to give, but you have your time, you have your talent, you have your treasure. So whatever we can all do at this time, there are some fantastic initiatives. Be careful, there are some scammers. There are some scammers out there that are taking people's money. So maybe All Souls Church has a fund that you're, you're using to, to feed the people in the area around the church, whatever it is, let's all come together and try to give to the most vulnerable. And last of all, I'm sure if I asked, if I could see all the hands up and I said, how many of you have a will? I wonder how many people would put up their hands. Do you have an estate plan? We sort of feel as if here that if you have a will, it means you're dying. It's not so. Wills are, estate planning is about life. It's about providing for your loved ones during your lifetime and beyond your lifetime. It's so important to put this in place. You need to have a will, a trust, joint accounts, life insurance, something in place so that if anything happens to you, your family, especially if you have children. If you have children, many people travel with their spouses on a plane or a, or, or a, a car. If anything happened to both of you, who do you want to take care of your minor, your young children? You're in your 30s, your 40s. It's happened too many times. And children, suddenly their entire life changes. There was a young family in Lagos. The kids were going to a school, a top school in Lagos. They, the parents sadly died in a car crash. They, neither of them had a will. They hadn't the will helps you to choose a guardian. The people that are going to look after your children and bring up your children if anything terrible happens to you both. The court had to decide. They had elderly grandparents who happened to be illiterate and living in the village. That is who the court felt was the best person to pass them on to. Even though family friends asked if they could adopt them and look after them and they would still go to their grandparents in the holidays, but the court handed over all the money to the, the grandparents. The kids are now growing up in the village. Now that is not what those parents planned for those children. It's just not. So 
I urge you to tidy up your affairs. I did my first will when I was 30, 35, and I've been updating it ever since. The great thing about a will or a trust is that as you acquire assets, you put them into the trust. So you're planning, all your plans are, are organized. And if you don't update your estate plan, you run the risk of disinheriting some of your children or beneficiaries. There's the familiar story is Kobe, Kobe Bryant, fantastic basketballer, phenomenal. He did a trust, fantastic trust for his family. But his youngest daughter was born last year and he hadn't had the time to update his will. So the, the trust has, has, has excluded her. Fortunately, of course, his wife has gone ahead and applied for them to, to amend the will to ensure that the young girl is put in the trust. And I'm sure she will be. But you can imagine in a, in a complicated family, like some of the families we have here, that could cause a serious problem because the great thing about trust is it's very, very hard to amend a trust. So to close, take action. Don't try to implement everything all at once. Select just three or four and focus and execute on them. You know, sometimes you have, you go on all these seminars and webinars and you, you just think you're gonna do something and then you don't, you just leave us with good intentions. Please don't leave me with just good intentions. You have to all resolve to make a change in your financial lives. It's about planning, saving, investing, and giving. And finally, what really matters? I think this time of being locked up in our houses may, has made us all look at all our things and our possessions and the material possessions. They mean nothing. It's all fleeting. If we didn't know that before, we finally realized it now. It's all fleeting. Maintain perspectives. Money is not the most important factor. Life is not measured in naira and dollars. It's good to have money and the things that money can buy, but check up once in a while to make sure you haven't lost your soul. You haven't lost the things that money can't buy. It's about having loving relationships with your family, your spouse, your children, your friends, and mostly, most important of all, your relationship with God. Thank you for listening to me. Wow, amazing. Thank you so much uh, for your time. This, this is a, a chunk of uh, meat for everybody to chew. And I think, and I guess that uh, I want to believe that quite a number of us have spent time uh, taking notes and uh, also um, meditating and a lot of rumination and a lot of thinking will have to go on after this for each and every one of us. Uh, uh, I've, I've, I've mentioned that for those who want to who have questions, they should, uh, they should kind of put them on the board. We have a, quiz, a few questions, I think because of time, we'll take maybe just, um, I don't know how much, how much time you have um, for us, Mrs. Akinkube, uh, but um, we'll just take a few questions, ma'am, okay, if, if you don't. Not an absolutely, pleasure. Uh, okay, so the, the first question we have here says, any tips on investing in Nigerian art? Yes, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I, would, I would say, first of all, go to visit some of the galleries. I'm hoping Artex will still happen. I don't know, Artex is a, just an incredible art exhibition by um, Tokini Peterside. And you have hundreds of, of artists displaying their work. Uh, an event like that, it's, it's October each year. You just first start to go around and have a look. I find it's best to buy what you love. Don't buy something because they say it's valuable. Buy something that you love and then talk to one of the experts at these events in the galleries. The galleries will advise you. Terra Culture is another one that has great art and they have people who are very knowledgeable about the artists. I'm not uh, very knowledgeable about art, so I would buy what I love, but I have seen how things that maybe we bought many, many years ago, and then we look at the, the value today and we're just shocked because we didn't even think about it. You know, so um, you've, the first thing is to start visiting galleries, start developing an eye. For young people, I'm telling young people now, try and buy at least one good piece every year. If you can afford to buy more, fine, but it's amazing if you start picking it up from now. 
and you know, when it, whenever you get a bonus or you get some extra money, try and invest in stocks and bonds, but also think about some art. So I don't have any advice as an art expert, but I do know that this is where the world is looking and all the top galleries are coming to Nigeria and they're buying our art and our art is selling in foreign exchange for huge sums now. So it's time to start and just go, when, when, once we come out, start um, visiting the galleries. You can go online as well, visit you know, all the, the major artists, look at their websites and just start to develop a feel of what you loved, what you would love to have in your home, okay? Okay, thank you very much about that. Um, there's another question here. Someone says, I, I hate owing money or having debt, but I really need money to finance a business. How, how can I overcome the fear of borrowing to invest in a business? You know, when you're following your dream and you feel, you know, you've got that passion and you feel so sure about your business and you've done your business plan, you know, it's all very well to say you, you're afraid, but if you've got a concrete plan, that is what gives you the confidence, I find. You've done your homework, you've sought professional advice, you've, you've, you've had experts look at your plan, you've done your, your SWOT analysis and so on, then you can see whether it's feasible to borrow or not. But the truth of the matter is most small businesses really have to have put some of their own money in so it's about putting skin in the game. If, have you got your own money? Before you th even think of borrowing, people will, will lend you money, are more comfortable lending you money when they know that you've put some of your own money in the business yourself. So if you, you have to start with what you've got, your own skin in the game. And then it's friends and family, which is why I was talking about credibility. If you've abused that privilege of borrowing from friends and family, friends and family tend to lend you money interest-free. So before you start going out to borrow from the banks, you know, who, who will take a while before the, the term sometimes for small businesses can be so onerous when you're just starting out that you normally have to have started out first before you can, you can attract debt. But do your homework first, put your own money in, you, you will tend to have to overcome that fear of debt. When you're borrowing for the right reasons and you believe in something and you've done your projections, of course, Nobody can project something like the coronavirus. So your plans can go completely out of whack. But that's mm. the risk that you, you, have to, you have to take. Thank you for that. Uh, another question here says, uh, so many things have been listed to do with money, and precisely so. Uh, my question is, what should a low income earner prioritize with the little income they earn? and in what percentage <laughs> that's that's a okay it's hard, it's hard to say the percentage because everybody's um responsibilities their situation is unique i don't know how many children if the spouse is working there's so many different things that come into that but but what i always say is that if you are earning fifty thousand a month and you can't save even five percent after you've paid your tithes or ten percent you can't save anything even when you have a million naira you won't save We've just got to have that discipline to save a bit, no matter how little. So right. no, no amount is too small to save. It just adds up. If your income is so low that it's impossible, then you have to start looking at other ways to increase your income. And this is where I was talking about your talents. You know, we've, we've all got to be creative. I mean, I was talking to a friend of mine, she makes t-shirts, of course, Everyone that was ordering her t-shirts has canceled. So she was devastated. Guess what she's doing now? She's making 20,000 face masks a day. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. She's making 20,000 face masks a day. She's just switched her plan. She could sit there and wait until people order t-shirts. When are they going to order a thousand t-shirts? Who wants to be in a place with a thousand people? Nobody. Do you see? So we've all got to be creative about thinking of how well, how good we can, we can try. My, my driver's wife was laid off, but she just found that she bakes really well. And I ordered one of her cakes and they're fabulous. So I've Amazing. told my friends and she's now selling her cakes. I mean, we have just all got to look inwards and think of that thing that we're, we're good at and that we can we can just try to try to do. 
the thing is just not to give up and despair. We've got to take action. Hmm. And be creative. Thank you for that. Uh, someone says, is it wise to invest in gold? Is in bank part of, in is it wise to is it wise investing in gold? Is piggy gold. bank if, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not very good about about gold. I I know that gold is a fantastic asset class. It's also high risk, so you mm -hmm. have to do more research. People do very very well, make a lot of money, but people have also lost huge amounts. So it's just another asset class. You need to do your homework, seek professional advice. I am a more conservative investor, so I don't understand how the how the gold markets work. It's a great, great investment if you know what you're doing, but you cannot put all your money in gold. OK, so again, diversification from the low risk to the high risk investment. So gold is higher on the scale of, of risk, but people do very well in gold, gold funds and so on. They do. Yeah. yeah thank you for that. Uh, so there's another question here. Funny, funny question uh, says, is Piggy Bank a part of investment? Someone also says, "What can you tell us a bit more about foreign forex investment?" Piggy Bank. Yes. What is, what, is that a different question? What do they mean by that? I, I honestly did not know. So I they guess mean the, the, the child, the piggy bank, the, ch the child. Yeah, 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 I guess sounds like you drop in little savings, but I no, think it's, it not an it's, it's savings, and you know, it's it's really for children. So it's so important that your children start to. When I was talking about teaching your kids about money, it's great to put give them a piggy bank. So we've we've set up um, school clubs, financial literacy school clubs, and the kids all have a, have piggy banks. At a certain point, when it grows to a particular level, they must open a savings account in the bank. They can't just leave their money in the in the piggy bank indefinitely. They have to be taught about banking and, and saving saving properly. And the other one about, about FX. You know, we have domiciliary yeah. accounts. We have mutual funds in Nigeria in FX. That's one way of investing here. You also have domiciliary accounts where you're just putting your cash, just as you have your cash in your Naira account, just so that you have some diversification. So if there's a, if the Naira loses value, you don't take a hit on all your money. At least you have some money. I mean, this time last year, what was the dollar to the Naira? And look at it now. So if yeah. you had some foreign exchange, you just have a bit more comfort and peace of mind that you're not losing value in all your money. So it's important to, to do that. Of course, mm -hmm. if you have ambitions of having your kids educated abroad or you, you have a lot of Time, you, you want to spend time abroad, you've got to also think about more significant investments abroad. So there's property and that this, this could be in other countries in Africa or in, in Europe or in America, you've got to start thinking about investing um, seriously in those, those places as well. But if you're investing from here, right here, we, we already have mutual fund investments and we have um, domiciliary accounts, but those are, those are investments you can do with small sums. You have to also look at look at larger investments. Yeah, right. I'm just going to skim through a, a, a number of these questions. Uh, uh, some of them are repetition, are repetitive. Uh, so someone is asking for tips on good stocks to invest in now. Uh, I, I, I guess you will need a, a stock broker. To, <laughs> yes, yes, to, we need a stock broker. It's important to advise on that. Manager and and then they will sit down with you and then they'll determine what what you should be. Um, investing in. I, I can't just say this is a good stock yeah, to buy because my, my target or my um, goals are different from yours. So what I'm right. looking to invest in will be different from yours. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. So someone is asking, okay, we talked about Forex. How how do I invest in mutual funds or for minors? Again, you... Okay, uh, great. Um, yes, just visit one of the asset management houses. There's some, very, you know, the top, most of the top banks have mutual funds. They're, they're asset management arm has a mutual fund. And basically from 5,000 Naira, you can open a mutual fund account in each of their names. So it'll be a joint name with your name and your child's name. Right. And you just make it a regular investment, at least at birthdays and maybe Christmas or, you know, just a, as, a, as a gift and every year continue. It, it's, it's such a wonderful thing. And when they start working, you then encourage them to start to invest in the fund themselves. It's a, it's a very easy, investment and I urge you to do that from the literally the time they're born just start to invest in, in in funds for them there's no point putting a child's in fact many many mothers embezzle their children's naming ceremony money <laughs> <laughs> don't, 
don't do that. I mean, and there's yeah. no point putting a baby's money in a savings account because they're not gonna, they're not, they're not gonna use it. Might as well be in a mutual fund. That's so much, so much more. Um, it, it has so much more potential than just in the savings account, which is not even meeting inflation. Okay, so that's a better idea than just putting your child's money in a savings account. Okay. Okay. So just to say that, uh, just for the purpose of our viewers, uh, questions that um, for those that have questions that are not linked to this uh, to to the presentation and this talk, we just advise that perhaps you um, you might want to. Uh, direct those um, uh, to maybe, I don't know if you do entertain questions on your social media uh, platform. What sort of questions are they, like, like what sort no, of- No, that was just a, that was just a general statement, just for oh, okay. okay. Yes, they can, they, can, they can send an email. I'll, 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 when we finish, I'll, I'll share the, our, our social media handles and so on, so they can send questions there, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we'll take maybe two, three more questions because uh, for your time. Uh, so someone has asked there, what is more tax efficient for estate planning, wills or trust? Again, I think this person needs to see it. Yes, trusts. Trusts are that's what one of the one of the great advantages of trusts are, are the, the fact that it's it's tax tax efficient. Tax efficient, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. And you know, in, in everything I was saying, all the income that you're earning, don't forget to pay your taxes. Don't forget to pay mm. your taxes. You know, it's it's it it will catch up with you. Too many people are not paying, and you know the, the government is so deliberate and much more organized in terms of collecting taxes. So build that into your plan. You need to be paying your taxes. Estate, in your estate plan, trusts are, are, very ta are much more tax efficient than, than just a will. Okay. Um, so someone asked the question, I'd like to know your thoughts, what your thoughts are about the events industry post COVID-19, precisely event center ownership <laughs> business. Oh. I've been I've been racking my brains about that, but you know you you you, ha you have to all come together and and really brainstorm about it because I'm sure there are huge opportunities. There will be prospects for events online. I'm sure there will be, um, because, people, because people have to manage these events online as well. We will get back there, but there'll be smaller, more manageable events. I'm not sure what it'll be. Maybe twenty. What what are they saying now? For the moment, it's twenty people now, but. It'll get bigger, but you'll have to have all the social distancing things in place mm -hmm. and so on. So, but you, but you've you've just got to think about the different ways that you repurpose the events. Mm. It's hard to say. It's still too early to see where that's all going to go. But I know an event planner who has been spending a lot of time setting up um, isolation centers. I mean, isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she has just switched her talent. If she can organize an event in a tent, she can also organize an isolation center. So we've all just got to be creative and innovative. Yeah. So, so you, you'll find, you don't just say you, you, you can't do that business anymore. What, what are people doing or across the world? Everyone is in the same situation. It's not just events, it's entertainers, it's yeah. um, restaurants, cinemas. You know, We've got to think this through, and it's very early days, but I'm sure there'll be a fantastic solution. You've just got to stay close to the ground, talk to people in your network. You know, my business is, is gaming. We used to have a games night every last Thursday of the month. People come, mm -hmm. a crowd of people come and play games in Terra Culture. Guess what we're doing next Thursday? Online. Right. Oh, wow, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to try it out because... It's yeah. different from digital games, but people have actually wanted to play board games, but watching each other playing. So we're, we're going to try yeah. that out. Yeah. yeah. So that <laughs> events are one of those that have been hit, especially because every single weekend we were at weddings, funerals, parties, and so on. There's got to be another way to, oh. to do this. Yeah. It's like school. Look at the schools. So there's an interesting one. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We're all doing our kids are doing online learning. Yes, yes. Yeah. So where did this position seems to be different from what it used to be the practice? Can you shed some more clarification on this? Please? On what That's what the question is. What, what was on, on what? So the person says, Can you on the need? So the person says that it is it, it sounds kind of unusual that the parents need to now say for the children's wedding. And the person says, this position seems to be different from what used to be in those days, 
where I guess people cater for their own wedding. Maybe some people have to cater. So, okay, so I guess the question then is, yeah, if, if I have to put money aside for my children's wedding, I mean, what can you share more light? Why is this important? Is this important? And if it is, why? Anyways, when I've trained them, I've given them the best. Okay, I, I'm just I, okay. I'm just talking from my own my own experience. My daughter got married recently, and and I just thought, wow. Even though we really cut back and we limited the numbers, you know, you have thousands of people that people want to invite. We just didn't do that. But a lot of people in, in our society, our families are so huge and people spend quite a bit and it tends to be the parents that pay for the wedding, both families, right. the parents of the bride or the parents of the groom. Of course, in some families, there's no money on either side and the couple themselves will then pay for the wedding. I think what, what, the, what the person that just said is, is a great idea. The couples should start thinking if you want, you pay for the type of wedding that you want, but what is usual? is that the families come together and they finance the um, traditional wedding and the white wedding. My complaint mm -hmm. is that I think it has become a bit too extravagant and we need to cut back. People are feeling pressured. The society right. has created a pressure on families to make them have to do what society wants. And you don't have to do any of that. You just right. don't have to. It becomes, but but it's but at the same time you should prepare for it. There are some basic things that you have to you have to pay for, and you don't want to be selling assets for that unless you actually invested in those assets for oh, that purpose. Like the way you save yeah. for your children's education, I'm just saying you don't want to suddenly get caught out in your fifties and sixties with a major expense at that time. And if the young couple can afford it, but if they're just if they're just starting out, you'll find that, you know, they need some they need some support. Yeah. Uh, so someone says, yeah, is it wise to invest in real estate building for rentals, considering the number of years it takes to get back the capital on that investment before having access to profits on that investment? So is this a, is this a good time to be investing in real estate for the purpose of renting? Oh, yes, I think real estate is a fantastic event, but it's all about the location. So, you know, where are you, where are you looking? I mean, I was talking to some real estate um, people recently and, you know, you don't, you don't need to pick the most expensive place that is out of your reach, but look at, look at a particular city. Is there going to be, look at Ibadan, for example. I just love Ibadan anyway, but imagine if the expressway is done. Imagine if there's a train station, train service. I mean, surely it, it should, it should pick up its city of enlightenment with the university and you know there's so much there I, I would have thought that that is a place to consider especially as if there was a fast train that took an hour then yeah. i would think young people can afford to live in a place like ibadan and commute to to lake i don't Absolutely. know so I say, and, and it happens a lot outside this country. You have in the UK yeah. people living out in the outskirts yeah. and coming into. I mean, London. the same. Some of my team spend two hours coming to Ikoi to, to work every every day. They could have lived in Ibadan if there was a one-hour train. You'd be at, at the marina. You know, there's you have to look at things like that. If there's a good road, there's electricity, all those sorts of things. Some people also talk about Ibejuleki. If there's a refinery, there's going to be an airport. If there's an export free trade zone, you sort of think. You've got to look at what, what infrastructure is going to be there. That You should be investing in property with a perspective in mind, not just investing. There should be a reason why you're looking at a particular area. Maybe the government is planning for some infrastructure there, so there will be road and power lines and sewage system to determine why you should invest. But to me, that's one of the best investments ever, property, but it's about location. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I will just skim through this. It's already we're we're really. Re I, I guess uh, our, our, all the all the viewers and participants are definitely uh, soaking in, and people are ready to take in as much as they do. But at the same time, we're also mindful of your time, and we don't. Want I could to let's let's give it for, um, five more minutes, shall we? Or ten okay, more minutes? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's right. So. Um, okay. Let me see. What's any other other questions here? So someone says the economy is currently very volatile, 
will this be the right time to invest or wait for the market to bottom out? I guess you've already answered this question before. So this question it's is It's a very good question. I, I called my stockbroker a few weeks ago to say, you know, that stocks are such fantastic um, prices. Is it a good time to buy? They say that he, he said he thought it was going to um, go down a bit further. So one could, um, one could wait a bit. But then um, what I'm practicing is cost averaging. So I buy whether the stocks are down or they're up. So when you have a certain amount going into the market every single month, it means you're buying more shares at the lower prices and fewer shares when the stock market goes back up. So it's just like a baseline way of investing. So I, so I don't have to worry about the market. I'm just picking up shares all the time. So you, depend, you decide on what, what area of investing you want to be in. So th there's, is there a good time to invest? Do you know when the bottom is going to be? You don't really know. And when a market recovers, it recovers so fast that, you know, it, it's, it's um, difficult to, to say. And when you find that the dividends some of the companies are paying, the dividend yield is still very strong, even though the price is low, then you might want to take advantage, advantage of that. Yeah. So I, I, as a person, I want to invest all year round. I'm not looking at the at the, the price on a week-to-week -week basis, just an amount that I just invest on a routine basis. Some people find that a useful way of investing. Others want to watch the market and time it. I don't have that skill. So I, I, I just invest all, all year round. Okay, so I think we'll take two more and then we can we can call it a wrap in terms of the questions. Okay. Uh, but um, so, the last one I will take together, and maybe we start with that. So people are essentially asking very specific questions in regards to their own industry. Someone says, um, do you have any tips on for hoteliers at this point in time? And another person says, do you have tips for those who own uh, beauty, makeup, and air business? So the first one was beauty, beauty, makeup. Yes, I mean, I called my makeup artist because I was very worried about her because um, I, even after where they open up, I'm not going to call her because it's just too close for comfort. Yeah. So Absolutely. I said, you know, what's she doing? She's got to start thinking about online classes. Yeah. And, I'm, and I can be her first guinea pig. She cannot just be waiting for the market to open because even if I think she's fine, I don't know which other people she's been to to do their makeup. So I cannot, but, but, we, but we all have to learn. So I want to learn. So I need a class. How's my makeup? Did I? Nice. I did it myself. That's a professional one. You, you look good. <laughs> <laughs> so she's. So I want. I need, I, need her, I need her to teach me because I need to do it properly so I can. I can dazzle everybody. <laughs> yeah. So that. Uh, that uh, and and one of us is is a, she's a beautician, Elaine. That's uh, so that. Is she there? Uh, so yeah, her, Elaine. How my makeup is, please ask her. <laughs> Elaine, can you answer it's that? It's very nice. Good evening, Ma. You look lovely. <laughs> <laughs> but I still need a lesson or two. Okay. So imagine, imagine if the makeup artist just teach us all online. How many women are there in Nigeria? You know, we all like beauty. So eight, seven, sixty million of us that need makeup classes. So I told her she 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 has to get online. Otherwise, she'll be she'll be broke. Mm, absolutely, absolutely, Ma. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, the hairstyle is a disaster. The hair. I mean, I don't even know what I'm going to do. They have to let, let me out because we can't, <laughs> we, we can't keep wearing the wigs. And then all the, all the gray hair that we were all hiding is now, is now showing. I mean, it's ah, terrible. <laughs> okay, so the, the final question, the final formal question for you in regards to this presentation. And I guess this person would have thought, uh, Am I skipping his or our question? So kindly talk about about skills investment. I'm, I'm skills. Not sure what the person is. Skills investment. Um, how do you invest in your skills? Your, your skills. Yeah. Okay. So so let's say um, what 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 skill would somebody want to invest in now? Piano. You're good. You're, okay. You're good. Yeah. So piano. Fantastic. Yes. So my daughter. My daughter is a singer. And, she, you know, she's told me she's in trouble because nobody wants to, who's going to go to a concert that she's having? She, she can't even come out of her house, but she's a very gifted pianist. She started doing piano lessons online. 
So it will take some time, but if you're good at it and she's learning and she's checking, how do you get people engaged online? How do you teach children? Parents want their kids to have piano lessons, but the teacher can't come to the house now. So that's one, one idea. We've all got to think of what it is that we can learn and, and provide. What are the skills you have? I've got a friend who's a phenomenal um, baker. She bakes the most amazing cakes. She's a good cook. Why not teach us how to do some stuff? We've, we've all got to embrace technology and get better at it. So she needs to go on, like, go and educate herself and invest. There are so many free courses, free webinars to learn how to improve the whole way that you, you, um, you do your craft. You know, there's photo photography, photography um, classes. I think mm. T.Y. Bello held a photography seminar last week, amazing. So if you are a photographer and you're trying to improve, use this time to just improve on your skills. What is that skill that you're good at, that you want to improve? Hmm. You know, I, I'm going, I, I want to improve my public speaking presentation skills. So I've signed on to a webinar in a few weeks time just to get better. I mean, I hope I'm, I hope I'm okay, but I still want to improve and I want to yeah. have a better way of presenting yeah. Present, presenting in terms of public speaking. So look at all the different skills. What skill do you have? Can you, are, you, are, you, are you at your best at it? Or is there room for improvement? If you need improvement, then you need to put a bit of money behind it. Or if you can find a free course just to get better and better. Yeah. So we all must invest in those skills. Find what it is you're good at. There are singing classes online. There are dancing classes. My trainer, is going to start online. We can't go to the gym anymore. So he's going to be out of business, but he's now developed a class online. And, and oh, okay. the beauty of that is that you have, you can have, instead of spending 30 minutes with me three times a week, he can have hundred of us at the same time. I mean, it's the, the potential is phenomenal because you can grow your business. If, if we just try to come out of this situation without fear, you can literally multiply your business with so many more people coming on board. If you, if you do it properly at a global standard. I know somebody in Lagos, a school where children are now applying from other parts of the world. That would never have happened. Her school is in Lagos, but she's got such a good online school that other people are interested in, in, uh, in um, joining. Do you see? So yes, invest in your skills, invest in your talents urgently, especially now where you have a bit more time. All the time that we spent going to all kinds of events and so on is there now. Yeah. And, and you know, we might never have this time again in our lifetime. That's a scary thought. Yeah. You might yeah. never, because normally you're so busy after work and then you're busy with your children and you just don't have this amount of time. Precisely so, precisely so. Okay, Matt, thank you so much. So finally, uh, you are the CEO of uh, game, um, games, uh, games, uh, games Board. Is that what Best, it is? Bestman Games. Bestman, Bestman games. games, I'm sorry, Matt. So how, how, how can playing Monopoly, I, for instance, I've, I've never, I just, for some reason, I never got around playing Monopoly. How does playing Monopoly help financial literacy oh discipline. it's amazing that that was the reason i i got in, involved in the whole monopoly um board game to ensure that we could now many many of your audience may have played the london version with mayfair park lane i wanted a, our own version which has our own streets our own landmarks that african children can begin to know about their cities now in monopoly you're buying property you're buying um, stock, you're collecting your salary, you're paying your taxes. It's a fantastic game of personal finance. It's a great way to teach children about earning and saving and investing. But not just that, it's also about talking about the laws, you know, for not paying your taxes, you're fined, for dumping refuse. You know, it, it has so much, it's a great educational game. So, you know, we're, we're, we're playing that with a lot of, lot of children in schools just to educate them about saving, investing, the importance of investing in property. And the great thing about it is that, that whole families can, can play together because right. the game is about 85 years old. So our grandparents oh. also, also know the game. 
you know, so you're, you're having grandparents and their children playing this game in spending time at home and, and playing. So it's it, for teaching your children and also spending quality time with your children. It's a great game to, to have and to learn to play. It, it's very real in terms of the lessons that it teaches you. So if you, tr if you buy property in Banana Island too early, right. you'll be bankrupt because uh -huh. you, just like in real life, you've got to start small and grow and build a property and take, collect rental income, passive income so that you, as you pass, so the people with the most property, as people are passing their property, they have to pay rent. So it, it has a lot of strategy in it. And same way as in real life, you've got to plan ahead. You don't just acquire things without thinking about them. So it's a, it's a great game and we're very excited about it. Great, so someone has asked a question. It says, hello, Mas, please, where can I get your version of the monopoly in this lockdown period? So yeah, I guess this is a good time for you to tell us how, how we okay. can have access to it. Our website is bestmangames.com. Best man, like the best man in the wedding, bestmangames.com. And we it's it's online, so it'll be delivered, delivered to you. It's also on Jumia. You know, so we, we, we've had a lot of families who it's a perfect time to play board games. So in fact, we, we please, if everyone can go to our, my Instagram handle, um, MM with Nimi, Money Matters with Nimi. It's on the last page of our slide. I'll show it, I'll show it to you. Because we have a games night. We want people to just bring out their board games in their homes and just play games. It's a wonderful way of learning and playing together. But beyond that, we have information every single day of the week. I have information to help you with your personal finances, um, just events that, and then also we have our own events where you can attend and learn more about insurance and estate planning and money matters for couples and all that. So we have a lot of information. It's at MM with Nimi on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and on our website, Money Matters with Nimi. So we have so much to share. So do do join Great. us. Always there. We, we, we will we will do that. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much for your time. It's um, it's been a uh, time well spent. And without further ado, I'm going to call on Ngozi. Are you there? Can you please uh, give the vote of vote of thanks and just help us to uh, thank our, our our presenter. In, and our guest in person of Mrs. Nimia. Thank you, Debo. Uh, I wish the session can go on a little bit longer. I don't <laughs> even want to, <laughs> I don't want to leave. I've learned a lot personally. I believe we all have received vital uh, financial tips to navigate through this season and beyond. Great. Thank you, ma'am. May I, on behalf of the Young Professional Fellowship of Osso's Church Lekki and our vibrant vicar, Venerable Ore Oluwa Abelisi, express yes. our sincere thanks to you, ma'am, for sharing with us from your wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. And um, thank you. I've really, really enjoyed spending time with you all. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for also using your time, your talent, and even your resources to serve in this season. It's an uh, absolute pleasure. And we, we, miss, we miss our vicar from our <laughs> We've <laughs> collected him and he's not coming back to you. So he belongs yes. to us now. <laughs> you stole him from us. Well, he's allowed. We're glad we did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ma. We pray that God will bless you and reward you abundantly. And we hope to uh, invite you again after the pandemic to fellowship with us in person. I know well, you love that just. I'm looking forward to playing your wonderful organ. I saw well, your yes. organ. Yes, in fact, yes, just yes, to be, uh, well, that that's good because uh, it, when when Venerable Abilisa and I were, were initially talking about you and uh, Ngozi, the the first event that we that we thought we would have with you would be on the on you playing the organ and all of that. But I guess mm -hmm. that. So we look forward to having. So, so that will still come. So we we'll invite you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. So everybody, thank you very much. We still have one or two things to do. We'll sing a few, we'll sing a, a last hymn, but uh, before we do that, we would like to, again, just to add my voice to all that Ngozi has already said. Thank you so much, uh, ma'am, for, for your time. These, we, we, are, we do not take this lightly. We do not take it for granted. We know how much, um, how much uh, corporate organization, if my company had to spend uh, for me to attend your seminar, I know how much they will spend you know uh so we, we we are really we're really really grateful we do not take it for granted at all uh we also use this opportunity to thank our diocesan bishop right reverend dr Humphrey uh Ulumakai for his encouragement actually he got to hear about this and uh, he called venerable and he said look i'd like to have some youths also join and i'm sure they must have oh, benefited wonderful. Wonderful. yeah yeah, uh, Vika uh, and Arch Dikin, um, uh, Venerable Oriolua Agulusi uh, Ngozika said it. Uh, he's such a blessing to us. We we are we're truly indebted to him. Uh, we thank him very much and his wife. We'd like to thank the Young Professionals Fellowship. Thank you all for joining in. And um, we, we this is just the beginning of many, many good things to come. Uh, so right now, so um, just to end the program, we will share We'll take the next hymn, the, which is the last hymn. Um, this is a very good hymn that um, I believe everybody, uh, it says, God of grace and God of glory. So, la, 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 la. God of grace and God of glory on your people for your Crown Chanters this story, bring its part to glorious crown. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. Ah, for the faithfulness of this set our feet on lofty places, guard our lives that Like places in the fight to set men free. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage that we fail not man nor thee. That we fail not man. No we now call on our venerable and our vicar, our deacon, venerable ability to kindly lead us in closing prayer. Thank you so much, Mr. Eboda. We are grateful to you for um the what you are doing and we thank you all for joining us Antinimi, we are grateful to you uh, we thank you we are always together you should know this we are always together um, um i've already said that even if the lockdown is still on we'll probably still organize something Nimi, i think we'll be on the organ uh, maybe you use your piano or, or we'll have to look for a way to sanitize our organ and have you <laughs> Uh, online. Uh, um, I, I want to also announce that this is going to be just first in the series because we have a lot of things uh, in the pipeline. Uh, we'll go into agriculture, doing agriculture without going to farm. How can we do this? We'll think about this. Also, home together series. Many families are together now, um, parenting in lockdown. We'll think about it. We'll let people know about it. And then we'll have singles hangouts. We want them to share their experience. And many of them may be able to probably 
uh, hook up at this time. We know, uh, you know, who knows how God works? It may be coronavirus uh, lockdown that will bring them together. And then we also will give attention to marriages. That woman that does not like the husband, they are now together under the same roof for a long time. So let's look at fanning the flame of love in marriage, even in lockdown. So we're going to put all of this together and then we'll continue the series. Once again, we are grateful to you, Antinimi, and we hope to have more of you by the grace of God. Let us pray together. King of glory, we are grateful to you that we are able to have this today. We thank you for your daughter, Antinimi Akikube, for how you have used her to bless us both young and old. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our children. We thank you for grandchildren. We thank you, Father, for everything that you have been to her. We ask, Lord, and we thank you for Young Professionals Fellowship members and all the people who have joined us today. What we have learned, we pray that you grant us wisdom to make use of everything the way you want us to use them in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that your church will continue to march on and the gates of hell will never prevail against her in the name of Jesus. We thank you for Adel Caesar, the Right Reverend Dr. Humphrey Bamishebi Olumakaye, and for his encouragement and for his vision for young people and all that is is put in place for young ones. We pray, Father, that his ministry in our midst in our diocese will continue to expand in the name of Jesus. As we sleep tonight, Father, we ask that you be with us in our dreams. You grant us inspiration so that by the time we wake up tomorrow, we'll be full of energy and will grant us sound mind. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We share the grace and fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Pray with us Thank you again, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Adi Wali Eboda, the president of uh, Young Professionals Fellowship. Thank you, our sister Ngosika Mba, the vice president, and all members of um, uh, Young Professionals Fellowship. I want to promise you, Antinimi, that we're already thinking about uh, starting an investment, financial investment club by the grace of God. And exactly. that's, yeah, and that's, um, we'll keep you posted uh, as we start our club. And then I'm sure other clubs will come up that's and then we will to um, put into use, good use what you have uh, uh, taught us. Thank you again and God bless you all. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a Bye. wonderful night. Thank Bye. You. Bye. 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 <laughs>